everybody. Can you hear me okay? Sweet. Uh, my name is Brenton Gunning. I'm the founder of Aldea. We're one of uh, Unbounded Capital's portfolio companies, and we're building a revolutionary new layer one blockchain that I'll tell you about today. Brief uh, intro about me. Uh, I'm an engineer. I worked at Microsoft. I worked at Snapchat. I was fairly early there. I had a team and then left that in 2018 to try to make blockchains easier to use and more scalable. So I know we're kind of in a bear market right now, so I thought I'd just remind you of a quote from 1998. Paul Krugman, the economist who gets just about everything right, right? <laughs> he says, uh, by 2005, the internet will be no more impactful to the global economy than the fax machine. That's an incredible quote. And so if you're ever feeling a little bit bearish on where we are right now, I'm incredibly bullish. And there's a lot of people that are saying things like that today in blockchain. So I'm going to here to tell you two short stories uh, and then a little bit about what we're doing for Aldea. So first story is how many people here have heard of the game Axie Infinity? Awesome, awesome. So this is the most successful and most popular blockchain game, period. And I decided I wanted to give this a try. So I went to the website. This is what the game looks like. It's a digital pet game where you can take your digital pet into different games. It doesn't really matter. But I went to the website, clicked Getting Started, and the first thing it does is have me download a wallet. No problem. I'm comfortable with that. I'm a blockchain guy. So I go and I download the wallet, went to install it, made me create a new password, uh, write down my seed phrase. You guys are all probably familiar with that, as hard as it is. Um, eventually, I make it through, and it says, your wallet has been created. Awesome. So I load it up and it says Ronin. I, I don't know what this Axie Infinity thing is doing with Ronin, but I guess they're related. OK, I'll just keep going. So then I go to step two of four. And step two of four is I need three axes to start playing. Now keep in mind, this is the most successful and most popular blockchain game out there. OK, I'm going to buy my three axes. I have some spare change. I'll do that. Uh, I go to their marketplace, and the first thing they do is they make me buy an Axie with something called Ronin Ethereum. I don't really know what Ronin Ethereum is, so I go on Google, I search Ronin ETH, read about how hackers have drained $600 million from the smart contract. Again, this is a very normal experience that people go through. But I continue. I'm only going to put $10 in there, no problem. So continue to purchase. Oh, and then my state doesn't let me buy the crypto either. At any point in here, I could have given up, but I kept going. Okay. So I Google, can I use ETH to play Axie Infinity? And the answer is yes, I can. I got to get Ethereum now. So I'm going to go get Ethereum. I go to Coinbase. Uh, I buy some Ethereum successfully. And what does it tell me? I just have to wait six days for my purchase to come through. This is a normal experience. This is not atypical. A lot of blockchain apps have the exact same problem. Um, Keep that story in your head for a minute. We'll come back to that. Uh, I want to tell you one more story. Uh, this is about, instead of a user, this is a developer. Um, and before Axie Infinity, there was another game called CryptoKitties. I'm sure you've heard about it. Not everyone knows the follow-up story from it, though, because it's very interesting. So CryptoKitties was the, the first major digital pet game. And they launched in 2017, uh, at the end of 2017 and got really, really popular. Um, in fact, they got so popular, they clogged up the Ethereum blockchain. People couldn't get their transactions through. They would click a button and just see a spinner. And the team got kind of worried. The team was uh, this guy named Dieter Shirley. He's uh, now the head of another blockchain called Flow. But he um, canceled all his partnerships. They had a bunch of deals with a bunch of companies planned, and they canceled them. And then what proceeded to happen was interesting. So the price of Ethereum proceeded to crash over the next year. People did blame that on CryptoKitties, and rightfully so, because it made questions of, is this blockchain going to scale? The team behind CryptoKitties started looking into what's Ethereum's scaling plans. And it's called sharding. And Dieter Shirley gave a great talk at the end of 2018 where he talked about why sharding would not work for a game like CryptoKitties. If it's not going to work for CryptoKitties, it's probably not going to work for a lot of other apps as well. So what does he do? He goes and creates a new blockchain called Flow. This new blockchain scales a little bit better than Ethereum, but not that much. And OK, and last thing, they get some more complexity here because they created a new programming language that nobody knows. And it's, I'm not picking on them. They're smart guys. They've done it 
a good job, but they were forced into this position where they had to make a new blockchain because a, a blockchain they wanted to build on didn't scale. So these two stories have uh, a couple things in common. Uh, yes, they're both digital pet games, but the real thing is that they're representative of two problems from a user perspective, perspective and a developer perspective of the complexity that pervades blockchains and the lack of scalability. These are the two biggest problems in blockchains today. And they kind of feed on each other. Because when you can't scale, you're forced to make complex solutions. And when you have complex solutions, they don't always scale. So yeah, so these, these are the two problems that actually got me to leave my job at Snapchat to go uh, work in this space. So we are building a new layer one blockchain. And this new blockchain is designed to fix these two issues. Different blockchains focus on different things, privacy or you know, ultimate store of value. We focus on scalability and simplicity. And we're trying to reinvent the blockchain. We're trying to get blockchains iPhone moments. I believe we're very, very early. You know, there were smartphones before the iPhone. They had little versions of the internet. They had little versions of games and app stores and all the rest, but nobody remembers them because the iPhone came out and surpassed all of that. So this is the moment we're trying to get blockchains today. So how do we do that? I'll just kind of go through a few of our, our big ideas that we're bringing to the table here. Um, first thing is that 99% of blockchains that are programmable do it with smart contracts. Everyone's copying the idea of smart contracts. And the problem with smart contracts is that they're not actually that smart, and they're definitely not contracts. But everybody copies this model because it's been shown to work. Um, you can think of a smart contract. People don't really know that aren't developers. Like, what is a smart contract? It's probably the worst name in, in blockchain history. But a smart contract, I think of it like an ATM, that you can go to the ATM virtually through your game and see your balance of whatever tokens or assets you have. Uh, the problem is that when you have an account on one game and an account on another change and another token, you have, imagine a room full of ATMs, and you want to know, what do I own? You can't just get that answer. There's not a concept of an asset on these blockchains. It's a key part that's missing. And also, uh, because all of the user assets are in one place, this gives a place where they can easily be uh, hacked or stolen. And we've seen this time and time again. So we are not going to do smart contracts on our new blockchain. Instead, we've reinvented a new model. It's called JIGS. So on Ethereum, they say everything is a smart contract. On Aldea, everything is a JIG. And a JIG is an interactive object. I know it's kind of abstract. I'm not going to get all into it. But the point is that. You can do everything you can do with smart contracts, but it's a more scalable and easier to use solution than what they're doing. OK, so then we have to pick a programming language for Aldea. And like most blockchains, we probably develop our own programming language, right? Ethereum has Solidity. Flow has Cadence, right? No, that's not what we're going to do. That's a crazy idea. 1.5% of developers worldwide know Solidity. Uh, we're not targeting those 1.5% developers. We're targeting everybody else. And so our blockchain uses TypeScript. This is the most uh, popular, depending on your metric, the most popular uh, language in the world used by 40% of developers. It's loved. It built the modern web. We found a way to make that secure and capable on blockchain. And then third, uh, to make things a little bit more secure, and also because the web has this feature called view source. This has been described as the web's killer feature. And if you go to your web browser and on any site you go to, you can go in the, the top menu and click view source and see the code for that website. You know what it's doing. Other people can learn from it. This has really made the web a very popular place to develop. For some reason, this is not a popular idea on blockchains. And I disagree with this. I think we should publish the source code on chain. Because this has been one of the leaks for why assets have been hacked is people don't know how a smart contract actually works is not on the blockchain. The compiled code is on the blockchain, not the developer's intention. We put the developer's intention, the original source code, on chain. And what's cool about that is once it's on chain, we can have block explorers that show documentation for your code. You can actually understand what your contract is doing in your wallet. That's one of the, the problems is knowing, like, what am I signing? What is this transaction actually doing? So source code lets us do that. And if we stopped there, we would have a very awesome blockchain just on that alone. That's, those are three big ideas that nobody has done before. Developer experience would be phenomenal. But that's not where we stopped. We are going for the home run here. We're trying to build something that really enables apps to, as big as they get, they'll be able to build on Aldea. 
And so Zach has hinted at this, but we were able to do 15 million transactions per second. I repeat that. 15 million transactions per second. So when you're laying in bed at night and you're reflecting on today, just go on Google, pick your favorite blockchains, pick the ones you think are scalable, and type transactions per second in, see what they come out to be. Um, we think this is a pretty big number. And the next follow-up question is, okay, why do I need 15 million transactions per second? Because clearly people are doing things just fine on blockchain today, right? Think back to those examples I gave at the beginning. Why was Axie Infinity forced to develop another blockchain? Why was Flow forced to develop, CryptoKitties forced to develop Flow? Because they didn't scale. And so um, I'm going to give you one use case. We have a lot of use cases in mind that need that scale. Just one use case is on the New York Stock Exchange today, there are 2,400 stocks. And the exchange does 2 million transactions per second. And so if you think about peak hours and what blockchain might need, there are currently 20, almost 24,000 crypto assets. This number is growing too. When you have on-chain exchanges, like people want to do, especially after the, after the FTX situation, having the ability to do millions of transactions per second is important. And then you think about games, think about Web3, what people want to do with Metaverse, you very quickly get up to the point where this number might even be small. So this is what we can do, though, today. And with that scale, you also have lower fees. Now, this is the fee rate we're targeting, one one thousandth of a cent. You can do that when you have volume. When you don't have volume, that's not possible. Right now, Ethereum fees are 50 cents. They go up to $5, $50 uh, pretty often. Uh, but if you're doing an on-chain exchange where people are doing high-frequency trading, you need fees extremely, extremely low. And so one one thousandth of a cent is our target fee rate. We also can uh, do something really cool with that fee rate. We think that that's a crossover point when uh, a user can just watch an advertisement and then make the moves in their game. So uh, one ad would get you roughly 200 to 300 blockchain transactions, 200 to 300 song plays, 200 to 300 moves in a game. Uh, this is very key. A ads built the modern web, and we think that they're going to change blockchain once we get the fees down. Because how often are you asked to pay for a company's Google Cloud infrastructure. Never. You're never asked to pay for their infrastructure. They subsidize that and make their money in other ways. The same should be true on blockchain. If you think back to that Axie Infinity example from the beginning, what if Axie Infinity was able to just give you three axes at the beginning? Just give you your initial set. They can't do that because the fees are too high. But if they were low enough, they would be able to do that. Three key ideas that we're building on. Uh, global scale, you need to be able to support every use case for the biggest ideas. Two. Developer experience, making things way simpler than what they've been. And three, we have this idea of jigs, which is interoperable objects. We're not the first. We're actually the second to do it. But we believe that this is absolutely the way things are going. And this will be a new model of uh, developing apps on blockchain. So I'll end here. Uh, we're making the most exciting ideas in Web3 possible. If you'd like to follow us, and I encourage you, because we're going to be releasing information over the next few months, go to aldea.computer. We have a demo there. You can see the SDK. You can try it out if you want to. And we can link you to Explorer. And uh, we're going to be having a Substack that publishes updates as we develop. So please give us a follow, and thanks for your time today. Thank you, Brenton. So for those of you uh, that have joined us recently, the theme of today is unbounded perspectives. So we're looking to get a wide, diverse group of perspectives here and hope that you leave hearing a few that you weren't aware of beforehand. So in that vein, if you haven't asked a question yet, have one for Brenton. OK, uh, Michele, over there. Thank you. Who is that presentation aimed at? Uh, well, it's aimed at anyone who might be interested in investing because we are raising capital. And we're trying to, I'm trying to pique someone's interest here about what we're doing. There's a lot that isn't in this deck. We can talk about business model. We can talk about use cases. We can talk about how we're going to get adoption. We think our competitive edge will not be scale. It might be developer experience that's going to be adoption. So we have a strategy there. And if anyone's interested in talking to us, we're raising capital. We're raising our Series A right now. And we'd love to uh, talk to you. So it's for investors, potential investors? Yeah, and eventually users, we will also be giving this to users as well. Cool. Thanks, Mike. Uh, over here, uh, Mike in the, uh, the black suit. You know I'm an enterprise guy, and you came from Snap. So my question is, when or how can Aldea be useful to an enterprise company like a Snap or a Facebook or some competitor? Because you talk about scale, so so images, videos, whatever it is. I, 
what's the use case for an enterprise and how soon would they be able to adopt something like this? We're going to be rolling out a test net this year. We have a mock net that's coming out this month, test net this summer, main net probably in the next couple of years. So we want to talk to any company that wants to build high skill applications today. We have the tool set that you can try it out. And if you can partner with us early, we can make sure that your application works throughout the life cycle. Uh, as for use cases, yeah, we have a, a, we're making a lot of bets here. So we have some uh, games are a big focus, IFC trading, but absolutely enterprise as well. They need that scale too. Uh, we're going to talk to several people and see where we land. Everyone's in a race right now to build the next high scale blockchain. Okay, uh, Alex over here. Hey, Brenton, uh, hey, fantastic Alex. presentation and, and great figures. I mean, I blew my mind. Anyway, <laughs> so um, is this using uh, our UTXO model or? You, so this is no. UT, no? Uh, that, this is that, account based. That, that is a great question. It okay. is neither account based nor UTXO. Oh, based. that's interesting. Tell us more. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> no, really. I, I didn't know. <laughs> Short answer is UTXOs. I believe scale really well. This is why I love BSV. Accounts are very easy to program. We've hybridized this model. And we're calling it an object based model, and it's kind of like a UTXO model, except it allows the programmability of the account model. It also allows the privacy of the UTXO model. So we've really struck the line. We are not the first blockchain to do that. We are the second. The other blockchain that's doing that is SWE, which I'm really glad exists now because I can point to it and say, we're not crazy. Even though we came up with these ideas first, we're not crazy. They're doing the same thing. And this is likely to be a, a popular way of writing apps in the future. I'm, I'm sure about that. That's cool. And just another question is that, uh, is this using proof of stake or proof of work? This will be proof of stake. And we'll have a community fund that's used to kind of develop the onboarding in the early days. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We got time for a couple more questions here for Brenton. Uh, Kurt in the yellow banana suit. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about fundraising, I am immediately thinking about Gary Gensler and who is the issuer yep. of the token. And uh, I mean, just right there. Yeah, like, yeah, how, yeah. how do you not go to prison, Brenton? <laughs> Uh, so we're working with a great law firm, Perkins Coie out of Seattle. They've launched Solana, they launched Polkadot, yeah. Polygon, a bunch of others, and they're giving us great advice on this. The short answer is that it seems like there's two ways you can actually do fundraising for a new blockchain today. Uh, we're letting the lawyers advise us on this, but we are going to register with the SEC essentially as an exempted security. Um, this is possible. We're not going to do an ICO or anything like that. The fundraiser will only be through accredited investors. And this does seem like a still safe way to do this. There should be possibility. We still want innovation in this country. Yeah. What we're doing is a good idea. And uh, we're not trying to scam anybody or anything like that. So I believe that there are you know, a couple paths still left that we can do this. And we're, we're using our lawyers to help us here. Cool. So I, I, I ask as a friend and somebody like I, I respect you and your work. But my concern about everybody and securities violations is I, what I don't want to see is you in four years on the steps of the Supreme Court saying, we really tried and we'll see in a few years after. Well, and I, so yeah. I think I think registering as a security early, if that's how it's going to go, makes sense. I'm wondering if that's a consideration. Should we just admit we're a security, go that direction? and, and Yeah, if, if you fall under, uh, this is a lot of details here. But, sure. Uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're good with the SEC. And there's a whole yeah. process for that. It's not going to be cheap. It's one of the reasons that we have to fundraise for a good amount here. But it still is possible. And it should be possible because there is innovation left in this space. A lot of innovation, I think, is still left to come. And so, yeah.